Hello and welcome to this video on how to make this tiger fur pattern in Blender. We're going to be using the new Geometry Nodes uh, hair groom system and it's going to be a, a fairly basic introduction to this system. But we're going to be learning a few key things such as, you know, procedural texturing on it, generating a proper UV map on our fur, and also tweaking the initial parameters of the fur setup to get a pleasing result. So to start off with, before we do anything, I'm just going to go into my render tab and switch over to cycles on the GPU. And this will just have this set up for later now. And first of all, let's add in a plane. And this is just going to be my demo, demo plane for this fur, but uh, you could do this on any you know complex object that you like. Just make sure that your object has a UV map, um, which is very important for the hair system to work with. So um, given that this has a default UV map, let's go ahead and shift A, add in under curve. Let's add in, you see we have these two options for empty hair or fur. I'm going to add in a fur object and that will just attach some fur to this base plane. And essentially uh, it gives us a bunch of uh, default behavior here. So if I select the hair and go into the modifiers tab, you can see we have a bunch of modifiers that Blender's added by default. And they all do something in particular to tweak the shape of this hair. So if I just start minimizing these, um, if I turn them off one by one, you can see that we get down to just these um, hair curves that are just basically straight lines. And now we can go ahead into sculpt mode and I'm going to use F to increase the size of my brush. We're going to be using the comb brush by default and we can just sort of like pull these hairs uh, over a little bit so that they're a bit more flat lying down and not just, you know, pointing straight up. And this will help us with our uh, realism of the groom later on because you never really see tiger hair that's um, super standing up straight. Uh, now let's turn on the interpolate node group and you can see that fills everything out a lot more. I'm just going to increase the density by a factor of uh, 10 so just multiply that by 10 and we get a lot more fur now. And to introduce some of that randomness again let's turn on the noise. Um, but you can see this is a bit too strong of an effect and too small scale so to go into the noise and turn the scale down to 0.5 and that increases the size of it overall and I think that should be fine. Now let's turn on the frizz node group again and that just shakes everything up a bit. I'm going to turn the factor down to 0.5 though just to turn the scale of that effect down. And now we have some nice hair and um, let's take a look at it in rendered view and I'm going to set up a light quickly. So I'm going to open up a shader editor over on the right and set it to world. And now if I uh, control T click on this background node, we get an environment texture added in and here we can uh, input a HDR. So I'm just going to input a HDR that I have downloaded from Polyhaven, um, but you feel free to use your own. Let's use the Savannah Sunrise environment as it's quite fitting for this. And now let's start to add a shader to this hair. So I'm going to switch this from world to object. And now um, you see we have a fur material assigned, but nothing here. So we need to click this use nodes button to show our principled shader. And now what we can do is start to think about the tiger pattern texture on this. So I'm going to be using a new noise texture we have. I'm going to use the Gabor texture. And this is a 4.3 node only. Um, but if I just preview this with shift control click, you can see that we immediately pretty much get the perfect result. Um, it's just basically like a tiger pattern um, noise texture. So uh, we can play with the parameters on this node to maybe change the scale of it or the frequency sort of controls like the distance between lines and anisotropy is obviously like how striped it is. I'm going to leave it at one and then we can rotate it around as well if we want to. Um, but yeah, I'm basically just going to add in a color ramp after this. Uh, to control the contrast of this. So let's drop in a color ramp and uh, pull the black and the white closer together until we start to see some uh, stripey patterns emerging. Um, so I think that should be pretty good. Now let's use a mix color node and use this color as the factor on this mix node. So now if I preview this, we can set two colors in here, one for our stripes, which I'm gonna make a dark brown and one for our tiger fur, which I'm going to make a bright orange. And we can always, you know, play with how these stripes are looking as well. Um, but yeah. And now we need to start thinking about um, incorporating that white gradient that we had. But 
Um, before we do that, we can't really go much further because um, there's a slight problem in that if you zoom in, you'll see that the color's actually changing along the, along the length of each curve. So the, color, the hairs aren't overlapping with the different colors, they're sort of blending across the length of the curve. And the reason for this is because the default um, uh, coordinate space that this texture is using is the uh, procedural coordinate space. So it's going to be using something like object coordinates, um, which uh, are not based, you know, per curve. They're just going to be this overall change in our scene. So we need to get a UV map working on these. And by default, um, Blender does pr uh, generate a UV map for these curves, but um, you'll notice if I view the UV output on this that there's this weird pattern running through it. There's this sort of like foreign eye pattern emerging, like you can see some hard lines. And that's um, based on the interpolate hair curves node, I think. But um, if we try and use that for our texture, we get some distorted weird results. So it's not really usable for texturing. So we're going to need to make a... Um, a clean UV map. And the way I'm going to do that is by using geometry nodes. Uh, because all I have is geometry nodes objects, I'm just going to add a modifier to the end of this, a geometry nodes modifier, and let's call it correct UVs. And I'm going to go into the geometry nodes editor, and I'm going to store an attribute. And this is going to be our new UV map. So I'm going to store it on splines, uh, and it's going to be a vector. And by storing it on splines, it means that each curve will only be able to have one value. And if we stored it on points, then there are multiple points on a curve, so it might have like a blended value, which won't solve that color bleed problem. So let's call this uh, UV. And let's go ahead and we want to essentially read whatever the closest value of the UV map is from the plane. So uh, let's bring in the plane object into geometry nodes, make sure we set it to relative so it works if we move it around. And now let's sample nearest surface, because our UV map is a surface attribute. Set it to vector, and let's grab a named attribute. Uh, set this to vector2, and our UV map on our plane is, uh, you can find the name in the object data properties here. It's just called UV map, so let's type that in here, it already exists and plug that into the value. Now essentially what we've done is say, said that for each spline, read the closest value of the plane's UV map and assign that to, to the spline. So let's just plug that into the UV channel here. And now um, we should be done in here. So we can go back into the shader editor and add in an attribute node to reference that attribute we just made, call it UV. And now we get some clean UVs without any weird patterns going on. So we can plug the vector into the texture, and you can see that everything works out nicely. We might just have to tweak the scale slightly with these new coordinates. But uh, if we zoom in now, you should see that we get a much uh, much nicer result. And this also means that uh, your procedural textures will work across any model with any sort of curvature or three-dimensionalness to it. So it's just good practice to do this, and it's a very useful uh, trick. And now what I want to do is just add in a white gradient into our color that's sort of running up from the bottom here, um, and just like a white gradient on the bottom. So uh, we could use a gradient texture node, but um, there's a much easier way. We can just separate out our UV map. And you'll see when I do this, we get two gradients on the X and Y, uh, running left to right and top to bottom. And we can just use uh, this top to bottom one as our gradient for our color. So let's duplicate this mixed color node, plug the Y into the factor, view this, and let's just change this from a black to a white value. And now to offset the position of the ramp, I'm going to use a math node. Um, using a color ramp will sort of increase the contrast here, so you don't really want to um, use a color ramp for this kind of thing. So let's just, yeah, let's leave it at 0.5 actually, that's fine. And let's plug that into our B of our main color here. So now you see we get a nice white uh, gradient. In order to distort that gradient though, so it's not just a perfectly flat line, I'm going to multiply in some noise. So after this Y, I'm going to duplicate this add node, and I'm just going to add in a noise texture. And like that, and make sure that your noise texture uses the same UV map as well, just for cleanliness. And now if I view this add node and untick normalize on the noise texture so it's more uniform, um, you can see that we've broken this up into quite strong noise patterns. Um, I'm going to decrease the scale of this by duplicating this node in between here and multiplying it 
uh, by something like 0.1 so that we're just making a lot subtler effect now if I view this mix node you can see that we've just broken up that shape a little bit and you could play with a noise texture to control that profile so that's looking pretty tiger like to me so I'm going to plug that into the base color and view that you can see it's gone a bit darker now once it's in the shader so I'm going to just bring up this uh, orange value to be a bit brighter something like 0.8 and um, the problem is that we're seeing through to this white base plane which is annoying so I'm going to give this white base plane a material and I'm just going to give it a dark orange material to blend in um, with the fur so yeah I mean that's pretty much it for the actual whole procedural groom setup and of course you can go back and um, recomb this to be in any direction you like and yeah that should be a pretty a pretty nice effect so um, the only thing I'm going to do is just increase the roughness up to 0.8 on that and I'm going to start to add in some lights into our scene here so let's grab a point light and just uh, pull it up over here pull it off to the side maybe give it a bit of a radius so it's soft and turn up the strength and just use that to sort of create like a nice little highlight over here and then um, I'll add in a camera camera to view with control number pad zero and yeah we can do a nice little render of this now but uh, I hope you learned something about uh, Geometry Nodes Groom in this and uh, how to get nice UVs on Geometry Nodes Groom and also just procedural patterns. You could, of course, uh, go back into here and replace this uh, little uh, procedural setup here with, you know, a painted texture of, of some different types of animal fur and that could be a fun little thing to try. Um, but yeah, overall, um, I, hope, uh, I hope this method was useful to you and thank you so much for watching.